What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you a way to intuitively and visually understand neural networks, especially if you are a beginner. So let us get right into it. All right, so the website that I want to show you in this video today is the TensorFlow Playground. So playground.tensorflow.org. And this website allows you to understand neural networks in an intuitive and visual way without having to write any code, without having to deal with formulas, without having to wrap your mind around complicated concepts. You need to have a basic understanding of neural networks. You need to know that they're composed of layers, input layer, output layer, hidden layers. You need to know that there are neurons in each layer. You need to know that... Um, activation functions exist and stuff like that. You need to understand weights and biases to some degree. But once you have these very basics, you can play around with this website to get an understanding of how much complexity is needed to solve certain problems, how the activation functions that you choose influence the problem that you're trying to solve or the model and how well it performs on the problem that you're trying to solve. You can play around here with different problems that you have to solve. You can add noise to the problems. You can add input data. You can add neurons. You can add hidden layers. Um, you can do all sorts of things here with this graphical user interface without having to write any code, without having to do anything technical. Uh, you can also change the activation function, and then you can just run it and solve the problem with this neural network. In this video today, I don't want to actually do a fancy tutorial. I just want to play around with that website to show you what it can do, what you can do with that website, and then you can just go to that website and play around yourself because I think you will learn most when you try um, to solve these problems with your ideas. So maybe to just use uh, one input or uh, one special input or just two inputs that you might think won't work, but if you add too much complexity, uh, or if you add enough complexity, maybe you can solve the problem. So playing around will teach you the most, but I want to just show you what you can do here. So the basic idea is you have this problem on the right side, which is a classification problem. You can also go to regression problem, but let's go with classification first. We have the blue points, we have the orange points, and we want to find a model. We want to use a neural network to classify them. So we want to have some input data and we want to know, okay, based on that input data, is that a blue point or is that an orange point? And by default, we have these two input variables, x1, x2, which are just the vertical and the horizontal coordinates of the data points. So you can see this is the input that we get. Um, and then we take those inputs and we feed them, in this case, into three neurons. And then we have two output neurons uh, or two more neurons in the hidden layers here. And then we have the output itself. Um, so we can just run this and I think we should be able to find a model. There you go. So with this uh, little complexity, we can already find a model for this one and you can actually see what's happening. So this is just the input, this won't change, but you can see that the input is connected to the next layer or the inputs are connected to the next layer. And then you can see that each connection has a certain weight and influences how much the next layer is going to pay attention to these input uh, variables. So you can see, for example, this neuron here focuses more on um, a left leaning diagonal, this one more on a right leaning diagonal, and this is more almost horizontal. And then this is combined even further. So these three neurons are then combined with uh, even more weights to the next hidden layer. And you can see what patterns emerge here. So here we have um, essentially the opposite of what we need, uh, which is why we have a negative weight here. I guess. And here we have actually something that looks like what we want to have, uh, namely the blue points in the blue area. And this is positively connected to the output. So this is a counter example, we connect it with a negative weight. Um, and those two combined produce this nice classification model. Um, and we can play around now with the different parameters. Of course, when we add more layers and more neurons, we're probably going to perform um, equally well, or even better. Uh, in this case, the problem is not too complicated. But we can also try to see what happens when we remove neurons. So let's say I have two and two, will this be enough or not? Now, in this case, you can see it's not enough. Um, we can run this a couple of times. Uh, I think it's just not complex enough um, to cover this shape of data. But I think when we add one neuron here, um, is this enough or not? I don't think so. I think the neuron needs to be in here so that the complexity can be connected to two more neurons before we get to the output neuron. So I think this is the minimal model. There you go. 
Um, but we can also try to play around with different inputs. So let's say I only give you the, um, the vertical data. In this case, we will probably not be able, I mean, we will certainly not be able to, um, to get this shape because we completely lack the horizontal information, um, which basically doesn't allow us to, to see where the points are on, on this axis here, or actually it's the vertical axis that we cannot analyze here. Um, so we do need something like this. I think we could maybe um, go with something like this. This should also be possible, I guess, but I'm not sure. But we definitely need to have vertical and horizontal data. So here this works. This is a different input. So you can see what the input looks like. And we can now play around and see what happens, for example, if I increase the learning rate to 10. And this is for those of you who know a little bit about machine learning, deep learning. Oftentimes, when you have a learning rate that's too high, you're going to just, um, what was the name? I think it was the exploding gradient problem or something where you completely go to infinity and you can't even solve the problem anymore. So you can see if the learning rate is 10, we cannot really find a solution. It's just too to fluctuating, it, it, it doesn't produce a meaningful solution. If I go to a learning rate that's too small, um, it is maybe going to find a solution eventually, but it takes just forever. You can see how small, uh, how slowly the loss uh, value here decreases. And I think the default was, was it 0 0.03? You can see how smoothly this goes. And we can, of course, also speed that up a little bit by going to one. Uh, but then you can see what happens. It, it's unstable because it's um, due to the learning rate, it's just jumping around too much, which is good if you try to escape the local maximum uh, or the local minimum. Uh, but it's not so good if you want to find a stable solution. So this is probably for this problem, a pretty good learning rate 0 0.03. So let's try to add some more noise to the problem to see what happens. So for example, we can say a uh, noise basically means the data is um, still coming from the same pattern from the same distribution, you could say, but we have some more noise, meaning that even though the blue data should be here in the center, and the orange data should be surrounding it in a circle, we do have some values that don't, uh, that are not quite where they belong. And we can still train the model here. Uh, it's just going to be harder, but you can see that we find some solution here. And of course, we can also overfit so we can add more neurons, more hidden layers. Um, I don't think that that's going to be enough to completely overfit everything here. But if we maybe also add some more input data, um, in this case, no, okay, it doesn't overfit massively. Um, but of course, if you uh, find a model that's just too complicated, it's going to just target every individual point, which is not what you're looking for. Um, so you can play with that. You can also, if you have noise and you overfit, you can add some regularization. So basically, um, to prevent overfitting, you can just add a penalty um, to regularize the model. So you can choo L, uh, choose L1 or L2. And you can also choose a rate how hard you want to do this. Um, and one thing that's also interesting is to see what happens when you choose a different, um, a different activation function. So this, let me just go back to the data without noise. Um, this is the tan h, I hope this is how it's pronounced function, we also have the sigmoid function, which should probably I actually think this should work as well. Because it's a nice logarithmic function. In this case, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Let's see if that's just by chance or do we need more complexity maybe for this one? Uh, because the shape is not too different of those two functions. But one thing that I actually wanted to show you is that the linear function won't work at all. So if you have this linear activation function, you're going to have problems, you're not going to be able to find a solution because it's just not complex enough. If you have a linear activation function, you basically have a linear model, and this is not linear data. This here is linear data. So here we can find a solution with the linear activation function. This is not linear data. So we cannot find a solution. Um, yeah, so Maybe let's try to go for a different problem. Let's try to go with this one because this will not be solvable with just three neurons. At least this is what I think. So let's just run this here and you can see the data is too complex. Uh, we cannot find this spiral solution with just one or two hidden layers with three and two neurons. But we can try to make it more complex. We can try to find some fancy patterns here. 
and maybe we can also increase the learning rate. You can see that something happens here. We can see that uh, it, it tries to go around the spiral and probably it will somewhat succeed. But um, I think what would definitely make it easier for the model to find a good solution would be to add some more input data. Um, especially this one should be helpful, I think. Or maybe, maybe this one and this one. There you go. Now I can see it. It tries to find the correct shape and it's somewhat succeeding. Now, if you really want to understand the very basics, what you can do is you can go back to the first problem. You can remove um, some hidden layers here. You can add three and two again. You can remove that. And you can see what happens when you manually change uh, when you manually change the weight. So what you can see here, or let me maybe rerun this until we get something uh, interesting where we have, I think this was it. There you go. So this is the opposite of what we're looking for. We're not looking for the blue points being in the orange area, which is again, why we have a negative weight here. However, I can click on this and I can change the weight. So I can go here and say, give me a weight of five to positively connect this neuron here to the output. And then you can see we have a very, very bad solution because that is exactly what we don't want to have. And only by assigning a negative weight, I can also assign negative five, only by assigning a negative weight, we can actually get what we want because we're trying to look for the opposite. And then maybe here now we're paying too much attention to this one, which is also excluding those points uh, from the orange area. Um, or actually, yeah, if, if we take it negatively, uh, with too much impact, it's also excluding the orange points in the upper right corner from the orient, uh, from the orange area, which we don't want to have. So we have to also add some more weight to this one, maybe five or something. And then we have a good solution again. So you can play around with the actual weights here uh, to see what changes. And um, yeah, so essentially, I don't want to play around here for hours. This is not the purpose of this video. I wanted to just show it to you. I wanted to show you what you can basically do here. And I would recommend you guys, if you're new to machine learning, especially if you're new to deep learning, you know that um, a neural network has multiple layers and um, every layer has multiple neurons and we have different activation functions. If you want to understand that and if you want to play around with that to get an intuitive feeling of what is happening behind the scenes, this is a very nice website to do that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.